Hey all, and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Our band of fugitives is still heading south towards Sword March, the land pierced by a great sword. And, uh, we got some new duds, as you can see. These don't just make us look fancy, though. No, no, they allow us to change classes and whatnot, which is pretty cool. But, you know, instead of waffling on about it, why don't we go actually put it into action? Noah right now... I believe his class is Zephyr, is that right, Spo? Yes, Mio's class is the Zephyr, which is a dodge tank. Uh, I think I probably talked about it earlier. Mm -hmm. Basically, very fast arts that you get from the Agnes classes because they recharge by auto attacks. So you're going to end up building a lot of aggro, probably doing less damage. Right, right. Now, we mentioned, um, I believe, in a previous part, Obviously, I have, like, so many commentary things going on, I forget what I say in previous stuff. But, uh, it's, it's pretty clear that they went with the Kvesi characters. Like, they get their arts back just over time. You know, it's like a recharge meter. But Agnian characters... Oh. Unique. I wasn't actually paying attention there. But Agnian characters get those back by auto-attacking, like Spar said. Now, you may not have noticed this, but your brain did. Kvesi arts are circular, but uh, Agnian ones are diamond shaped, also like in Zelda Blade 1 and 2. I never really paid attention to the difference, I'm gonna be completely honest. Uh. Probably because I did not play uh, much of Zelda Blade 2, so that never really clicked that much. I know the, the similarities between them, like one is one game and one is the other, but the shape never really clicked in for me that much. Now we also have access to character switching on the fly. Haven't really had a chance to use this yet, but uh, I'm going to make use of it now. One other thing that I think is active is fusion arts. See on the left, if you let go of the trigger there, you have uh, one of your arts, master arts from another class is available. If you hold ZR, I think you can select both arts that are on the top at the same time, it'll activate both of them and you'll get both effects at the same time. Very cool. So yeah, that just opens up so many options for combat and whatnot. And like, you can do this on the fly if you want. All under control. Yeah. Good stuff. It is very cool. The, there's so much depth to the, to the combat. Mm -hmm. And the story as well, because we'll be getting into more of that as we go along. But this is really where the combat itself opens up to the point that I really say that the combat in this game is better than Xenoblade 1, which is not something I thought I'd say before going into this. Sequels are meant to advance on their thingamabobs, and I'm just glad this seems to have delivered thus far. I tend to not switch characters because I usually find one class that I like and stick to that one. Mm -hmm. Much like I do in Xenoblade 1 where I play as Shulk almost exclusively. Fair enough. But I do tend to stay on the DPS classes, the damage classes, just because I find those to be more fun to play overall. Now, if we go to our objective here, we have the caravan thing. That's game-wide, but I can select it to main story. And we have to go to the south of this place and use our powers on some Bodom Grebels. They're just making up names as they go along at this point. <laughs> Be very careful to avoid that uh, unique monster that you see over there. And there's a level 22 behind it and a few very high level things around here. So uh, definitely you want to avoid those as much as possible. Yeah, I uh, actually went about this place had a little bit of a grinding sesh, didn't really go up that much, maybe one level, and I attempted to take that thing on without using any switching, without, <laughs> you know, keeping an eye on my healers and whatnot, and it didn't go so well. I would say that in this game, you kind of need to be a few levels above. Here's the introduction to fusion arts, by the way. Yeah. You need to be a few levels above a unique to be able to find it, and that has continued to be true even as I have reached now level 85 in my playthrough, I still kind of want to be a few levels above the unique in order to uh, do that, because they are still kind of destroying me. 
Hell yeah, baby. I love lands with the <laughs> hammer that is very clearly meant for someone else. So if you get both of the arts uh, charged and hold down ZR, you can select both of them at the same time. Oh, okay. There we go. And so it will activate the effect of both arts. Probably not a great idea for lands on a damage dealing class to have uh, his master art set to something that deals damage, but I don't think you can actually change that right now. Nimble there. Like the way you usually fight. Like a girl. It looked like second nature to you. It was crazy. She looks great in that jacket. You have seen yourself. I think they all look great in their alternates. I, I think Cinna in Lanz's jacket this? is you know, perfect. And I've actually I kept Lanz and Cinna swapped into right. these outfits through my entire playthrough. Oh. The gauge for the locked icon has filled right up. Ooh, that just means we need to keep killing and then we can wear even more clothes. Yeah, so you can unlock a whole bunch of different classes, not just your different party members. There's other things to get throughout the game. The problem that I have run into personally, and I'm sure a lot of people have as well, is that to unlock classes, you need to be within five levels of the enemies you're fighting. And so if you're overleveled, you actually don't get any progress toward unlocking new classes. Huh. I wonder how that works when you max out the level then. Uh, earn enough class points through battle. Da -da -da. Oh, you could also obtain class ranks by spending Nop on coins. Yes, that has been very good for some classes that I just don't want to play. Look at them ranks go up. <laughs> I still love that chibi art. Uh, if you go to characters class and press ER, you can see detailed info on the selected class. Okay. They're graded. Very good. I will immediately forget all this. Stance type arts. These arts grant a special effect that will last for a while. However, characters can only have one stance active at a time, so be mindful. Basically buffs. Okay. Now, should I keep everyone as is, or should I go back to the, uh, the regular stuff? I changed back to regular so that I could finish ranking everyone up, but you do what you want. I would recommend go ahead and continue on to the next region, though. But everything is shaking. That's a level 12 unique monster. Here we go, guys. Let's get well, you know. Usual, we haven't really had chance to uh, listen to You Will Know Our Names finale that much. <laughs> now, hopefully I can bring it over here and uh, fight it on its own. You, you might get caught up in those things flying around it. Think this is the norm. Here's a tough customer. Let's fucking go. I think you're good enough now. All right, let's try it. Kind of want to play the healer for this one. Be sure to hit that daze whenever it's toppled. There you go. Hell yeah. I'm probably going to put a comment in some of the early parts of this, but I do want to uh, mention this actually in voice so that everyone hears it. A couple of the things that I have said uh, in previous parts I have since learned are incorrect. And I want to let people know about that because one, I don't want people posting spoilers in the comment sections. And two, I also want people to understand that I have not finished the game yet, so I'm still learning about it too. That's fair. Oh yeah, here comes the breakdown! Oh, the guitar is so good. <laughs> Keep everyone nice and top top some. These are the most dangerous types of enemies because this one has an AoE attack. And I found that no matter what you do, these guys are always going to rip through you because your AI party members like to bunch together a lot. Yeah, it seems that way. I think you're at just the right level to take this guy right now, though. You seem to be doing fine. And hopefully I didn't just jinx you. <laughs> 
Come on, guys, stay in the field. Yeah, you know they're not going to. <laughs> he resisted my sleep. I don't think it would do much anyway because it would wake up instantly the next time it got hit, so. Yeah. Using more for the damage than anything else. I think it just transitioned to finale. The finale part of the song, I'm not entirely sure about that. If you notice up at the top, the HP bar for the boss is burning. I think this might have been explained that when some enemies reach half of their health, they'll go into like a rage mode. Mm -hmm. And that might be why the uh, song had transitioned like that. Never miss a trick. This is going surprisingly well. I, I really didn't think you were ready for this, if I'm honest. Oh. Just because of how unique monsters work in this game. Well, I figured, like, if we're gonna, like, punch above our weight, I should probably handle healing. I've honestly found that the AI healing is fine in terms of how it plays, just that the healing itself is kind of weak, in my experience. Oh, I'm not going to get to Daze again. Nope, but you did launch it, which I think negates its defense while it's launched. Booyah, baby. Our very first unique monster taken down. And this thing, which I think was in two, mm -hmm. yeah. or it leaves a grave marker and you can refight it. Uh, head through da -da -da, and enter the Fordis region. Okay. One thing I did learn uh, in between sessions is that it's not actually pronounced Asia in the Asia region. It's actually pronounced Etia, which is weird and makes completely no sense. So I'm going to keep saying it wrong. <laughs> Milik Ravine Way. There's still more of Milik Meadows to check out, but I think I might do that in my own time. Like I said, that area is huge. It keeps expanding, and this is a really, really big region. You're honestly going to be here for like the next four sessions at least. Wow. Covering maybe 30% of the region. <laughs> Hold it a moment. I have a proposal as to our next route. Go back to regular clothes. Okay, shoot. I'll send you the map data. I think you have the option we'll now for everyone to west. change clothes no matter what class west. they're on. So if you like Why a particular that? thing, you can change it and still stay on a certain class. Control. There is a certain degree of risk, as they'll have deployed. So let me guess. This is quicker, but it has yeah, but it has more risk. Okay. What about the yeah? You definitely don't want to go that way because there's really high-level enemies for one thing. Uh oh. As of yet, however, we'd suffer a significant time loss. Yes, but it is safer, and I won't get hit in the head, which I prefer. Wait a sec. We're gonna stir up the ski tonight. The amount of time that you would save is pretty negligible, and the amount of risk that you would take is y'all gonna die. <laughs> but Agnian troops are deployed there, yeah? Yes. And we're still gonna go. All I said is that it would be more efficient. But this is an open world RPG, so you make the choice well, at the end. You need to be more efficient. We're on a bit of a linear path right now, but you're approaching the point where the game completely opens up to where you can go explore. Right. You're kind of already at that point. There's just not a lot to explore at the moment. Yeah, I was having a chat with Spa about this because I did feel I was being led along a little bit, you know, leashed as it were. But um, I was still enjoying it. It was just a lot more linear than I would expect from a Xenoblade game. Because time is the start of this game is actually very similar to the opening few hours, or even the first half, maybe, of Final Fantasy XIII. In that it's very linear, and also in terms of the story, all the party members are turned into a magical being that is seen as an enemy by the entire world, and so they're on the run. I noticed that comparison a few days ago, and it kind of blew my mind. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm the leader, so I gotta make the choice. Remember that Mio only has so much time left before her homecoming. He knows, she knows. I think 
I'd rather take the safe route. As for the heat, the red jacket with the white gloves is quite nice. I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah. Tyon, Sana, please. Fine then, if you absolutely insist. Then it's settled. We're all cowards. Safe way ahoy. <laughs> Guys, we're out of here. I've got to say, this jacket keeps slipping down my shoulders. I'm not sure I dig it. There they go, flapping about, being all high level and whatnot. Actually, these things are about your level. Most of the stuff you'll find in this lower area is right around where you are right now. If you do head off to the right, you'll start seeing some of the high-level enemies that uh, I warned you about, and even Tyon will actually mention, hey, you shouldn't be going this way. Okay, so... Leave the enemies to me. Ah, okay, so everyone is maxed out now, so it would actually be better to leave them on the other classes so they can start building ranks in those. <sighs> okay. Ten is actually the max that you can get right now. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go to the expansion pass, which I bought between the last part and this one, and we are going to cash it in. I have absolutely no idea what's in any of this. Well, in volume one we get expendable items, which is just a bunch of knock on coins. Uh, accessories, just a bunch of cool accessories. And clothing, just different colours for the gang and whatnot. Oh, cool, alright. Yeah, those are some really good accessories that I'm seeing there. Uh, you can use clothing once you unlock the character's clothing menu by progressing in the game's story. Well, I cashed it in now, so I showed it off. New hero and intense enemy battles. Interesting. Uh, da, da, da. And that last one is kind of like um, Tall in the Golden Country, but for Xenoblade 3. Ah, okay. Yeah, again, I had no idea what was any of that because I haven't checked it out at all. I was kind of waiting to finish the main game before I even looked into the DLC, because I knew there was a lot of story involved, but I didn't realize some of it was just kind of items and cosmetics, so maybe I'll go ahead and grab it. There you go, mate. You wanna fucking go? Who should I play as for? I would recommend, especially in a fight where you have multiple enemies like this, to leave the tanks to the AI, because they're gonna be good at switching targets to keep aggro and everything. Right. So play either a damage dealer or a healer. Okay. Uh da -da -da. Yeah, as play as you do. Uni's the bus. She is the bus. <laughs> Uni seems to be the fan favorite for the party members, as far as I've seen. For many reasons, actually. Her dialogue and accent is just really fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people seem to really like how she looks, which is, you know, take that as you want. She got a fat ass, is that what you're trying to say, Spore? Uh, something like that. <laughs> Ooh, who shall we side with? Let's see. For these, I always tend to go with the XP, because you can get pretty much an infinite number of Nabon coins. As always, I would say just do whatever you feel like doing. Well, these guys seem like brick shit asses, so I'm not going to go after them just now. <laughs> I ran into a couple of monsters that were fighting in sort of an optional area that I was doing, and when I came back to that area later on, it was populated more by the monster that I ended up helping. And I don't know what caused that, if it was actually the fact that I helped it, because when I came back later, it had switched back. Huh. to the monster that I didn't help, so I don't know if that was a temporary thing, if that's even a thing the game does, if it was just a random chance for something to show up. It really kind of weirded me out, if I'm honest. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool if there's, like, temporary ecosystem changes. I think it's always cool 
when a world keeps moving regardless of the interaction of the characters because that's a world that's alive yeah but it's also really cool when your characters do actually affect the world as it is happening no everyone's trying to get up here <laughs> <laughs> oh it's just like drobark going mock tad into the wall all over again these little green rocks in the ground they're enemies that will pop up uh, and they will aggro you, you no matter what level you're at. These level 15 guys will aggro me at level 80 if I ran past them. I just helped your brother-in-law and his wife. I, I fucking hate him, to be honest. Uh, you know, friend of mine. Tiny girl, big weapon. It's an anime trope. It's one of my favorite tropes. I love Sina so much. I think she is actually my favorite character right now, due to a certain storyline that I did in the past couple of days that was just really fun to watch. I think I remember you saying, like, there's not heart-to-hearts, but characters have, like, much more detailed side stuff. Yes, um, every main character has a specific side story that deals with things that are important to them. Uh, this is also true for the heroes that you'll get later. Uh, and all of these are used to unlock the rank limit on the classes and stuff. Okay. Uh, but they're also just really cool stories. Yeah, it's nice that you want to fight it all, but I want to see what's over here. <laughs> for real, though. It's Eva, Santa. You're not going to eat it. I see you down there, Judring. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck off, sharp witted Tracy. <laughs> Heard you talking shit. Oh, I see. It's that pathway over there. That's why I was getting confused. It's okay. That's what editing is for. It's also been so long since I've been in this part of the game. Yeah. <laughs> That soft and smooth little guitar riff there. It's so good. The music is really great. My first comments about the music when we first started this playthrough came from uh, the fact that I spent a lot of my time playing this game with the sound off because of I was playing in handheld mode. And uh, Tom actually found that hilarious when I pointed that out to him. It was so funny. Like, yeah, I don't think the music's that great. Literally hasn't been listening to the music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should probably get my weapons out, huh? Yeah, you're switching characters a lot more than I ever did. I pick one class and I stick with it until it's max ranked. Oh, everyone unlocked more classes now. Nice. That thing should leave you alone if you walk under it. Unless you throw a rock at it. <laughs> I want to fight it, though. Birds have had it too good for too long. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Do a back attack from the front. Who gives a shit? These fusion attacks are very cool. They do a lot of things later on, and the more master arts you get, the more combat really opens up, and you have, like... You'll eventually end up with three master arts, along with your three regular ones, and so you'll have six to choose from. But if you use fusion arts, it's three, but they're way, way stronger. And they also help a little bit in uh, something that you'll probably unlock in the next session that we do. Right, right. The combat is, like, crazy deep, and I want to talk about it, but you just haven't gotten to anything yet. <laughs> the fuck is that thing? Oh, it's a bigger bird. Yeah, it's a big bird, and it's got a container next to it. That's the white glowing light that's coming up. How to get up there, though? Or a yellow light, as it actually is, to say the proper color. It's okay. He's colorblind. 
I'm not, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we'll need to advance a little bit before... Oh my god, what happened over there? Uh, you'll run into these sometimes, where it's just a big mass of dead bodies or husks or whatever you want to call them. Uh, you are going to have to clear out those enemies first, though. It's okay. Ah, she said it! I don't think I've ever actually heard that in game. Here we go, guys. Let's give him the usual, Noah. I'm surprised those other hawks off to the side are not trying to fight you. Uh, the boss isn't very nice. I guess so. <laughs> Fans of Xenoblade 1 will probably see these things and be terrified because the giant hawks like this were the level 80 ones that were at the top of uh, the valley in Gaur Plains. Oh yeah. <laughs> I used to grind those along with the uh, territorial robots, or whatever the little versions were called. Just for end game purposes, you know. I do wish that Expert Mode had made a return in this game. I think we mentioned that last time. It's just so weird that they did not bring back anything like Expert Mode. Or like an easy mode at all. There's an easy difficulty, which I guess you can change like mid-game if you wanted to. And I think that's what Nat has been playing on. She's been playing on easy mode just because, you know, she's more interested in the story than anything else, so that's fine. Yeah, for sure. I mean, all it does is like change your values here and there, so it's not like it's ruining the game design. I have heard from some people, or seen some posts, that some of the boss fights on hard mode are just absolutely horrible. Like, upwards of 40 minutes for a single boss. Ugh. And that's a single attempt. That's not even retries. Jesus Christ. Well, Xenoblade is kind of like MMO RPG at its core, so... It has a bit of that flair to it, yeah. God, the fact we have access to, like... Uh, I don't know, like, how many of the other things, the left side, we can get, but we'll have, like, six or seven moves at our disposal. Yeah, like I said, you get up to six total because you'll get three Master Arts, and those can be selected from any that you've unlocked from other classes. With the caveat that if you are on a Kavesi class like Swordmaster... You can only choose Acnean Arts, like Zephyr, for the Master Arts. So you won't see a Sword Master using something from um, Uni's uh, Ether Cannon or whatever. Right. And off they go. Ooh, I get chills every time. Uh-huh. The one where they play together, when you get to the, the big piles like that, piled such a weird word for that. I don't like that. <laughs> uh, it's not incorrect. The big group of husks, I think, sounds a little bit nicer. Both of them play together and, oh, it's so good. The fuck is this? This is a side quest that you probably cannot complete, but uh, probably by the time you get to the end of this region, you'll be able to. Basically... This guy is dehydrated, and he needs some collectibles that are uh, moist, basically. Ooh. For lack of a better word. I don't think it's fine, so long as Phil... Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just let him die. Collapsed trader pond. That's nice and all, but I got shit to do. Yo... Yeah, so if you talk to him again, he'll basically ask for uh, certain items, and if you have any of them, you'll be able to turn them in. Basically, you get to choose which items you actually hand over, which is nice because there were some quests in Xenoblade 1 that had branching paths with different items, and if you already had the items, it would automatically lock you into that path, which was bad. The item that they require is... Oh, I have none of these. Yeah, you'll have to explore in this region to find a lot of those. You stop with the fucking guilt trip, alright? We're on a mission here, with fugitives. 
I wouldn't worry about that one too much. Basically, just check on it every few hours mm -hmm. to see how much stuff you've gathered. You think you're all that, do you? You're dealing with me. Does your pack just not care? I think they were a little bit too far away to get pulled. <laughs> Oh, that feels good. It's crunchy. The giant swing is really great. It's also one of your strongest arts that you'll ever get in this game. Very cool. So are we good to, like, switch back, or should I keep leveling? Uh, check your, um, thing to see where everyone's at in ranks right now. Okay. Characters, class... Everyone's still at rank 5 on these, but everyone unlocked one extra class, so you could switch to those. Well, not everyone, but most of them did. You could swap around if you wanted to, but I tend to just leave them until they get to max. Fair enough. Eh. And notice how everyone gained different amounts in each class. That has to do with their compatibility with those classes. The better compatibility they have, the more they'll gain in terms of unlocking, and also the faster they'll gain ranks and stuff. Okay. Oh boy, another gang war. I think this one's just between different types of hawks. Yeah. <laughs> This thing's already half dead. I don't even think we needed to help with this. <laughs> I did all of that. You got the reward. That's what matters. <laughs> that was over way too soon. That I think XP from those goes into your bonus XP pool, so you'll have to wait until you uh, get to a camp to turn that in. Jesus. I mean, it is a wild area, per se. Hey, guys. My cat is snoring off to the side of me right now. It's very adorable. Here we go, guys. Let's give the usual, Noah. This was like six level 14s versus two level 12s. This was a massacre before we got here. Are we. Lads, are we the baddies? <laughs> well, whatever, more levels for me. What the fuck happened here? Ah! Uh -huh. These craters like this are kind of always traps. <laughs> There's always going to be something at the bottom to jump out at you. See, that's me. I read the situation wrong. There will be the odd case where you expect something to jump out and then it doesn't. Uh -huh. And it's always funny when that happens because I'm so terrified. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's just a husk sitting there. That's all right. That scared the shit out of me. <laughs> the shadow? <laughs> yeah, because I thought it was like one of the level 80 birds that just flies around fucking... What's the name? Gormot in 2. Like I said, in this area, there's nothing like that. In some of the next areas, you'll start seeing some high-level things wandering around, but they're very easy to avoid. Oh, yeah, these things are level 16. No wonder your party is having a bit of trouble. Oh. I guess we're just running. Not a bad idea. Can you climb this? No, okay. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, alright, there you go. <laughs> I was wondering if you were even able to get out of that. <laughs> no one just, like, teleported and then fell over. You can stop chasing me any time. For real, though? What, what's with the aggro range and now other things are chasing you? I mean, it looks fun. Why don't I join in? <laughs> 
guys. Oh my god, it's the fucking fallen arm. It sure is, yeah. I uh, did not actually notice that when I first came by here. This half circle thing that you're running near is actually uh, the thing that was inside the Machina village. Huh. It runs around the perimeter of it. Wall of the Great Hand. Yeah, even with that, I didn't realize that was the Makana's arm. How far? That's how stupid I am. <laughs> You're not stupid. You were just inattentive. Uh, I, I, give me both. Give me both. <laughs> okay, you can have the medium-sized L. <laughs> Where is this tootalooting coming from? Yeah, yeah, abu, etc. Sword of a fallen lad. We can't let that lie. Oh, okay, fine. Whatever. <laughs> where is the rest of the party? Are they, like, behind Senna? No, where the hell are they? Where? Oh, they're there. What the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> that is a very good question, Spa. I think everyone's gathered together now, finally. Again, it's just so interesting to see you switching characters. Well, I mean, if I need to heal, I need to heal. I mean, a lot of the healing comes down to the fact that the stuff just takes a while to recharge. Just beating a dog in the desert with a huge hammer. <laughs> Hell yeah, baby. Alright, little fella over here. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. If you run in front of it, it will aggro you. <laughs> Where is the rest of your party? Why are they lagging behind? I don't know. Is it because they can't jump up three feet to get to this thing? Well, I mean, we're all here right now. I count six of us. Yeah, it just took him a minute. <laughs> oh, he's already dead. Never mind. I'd better send them off. Do you have any requests, Mr. Husk? Um, not really, no. Funny thing to go back to me being an idiot for a second. If you pause the game, real quick, up in the top right corner, there's a few lists of the items that you have. Uh huh. The knob on coins and your money. The thing in between that is your ether cylinders. Right. For a goddamn long time, like up until last week, I thought that was the number of husks that I had found in each region. No, uh, I, I get it, because it looks like a flume. Yes, it does. But it also is exactly the ether cylinder c icon. And I did not catch on to the fact that it was changing so wildly because of that. Oh, spa. Sparity spa. Yeah. Are you going to try to fight this thing? Well, I'm not trying to fire, I'm trying to get the canister over there. Oh, yeah, that's fair enough. But if I need to punch it in its face, I will. Eh, you might need more than a punch. Calm Camel. Okay. It's not that calm if he aggroed to you right away. Not really. I'm helping. EXP is EXP. Yeah, and this is also getting you class points and another type of points that you'll probably be unlocking in the next session again. Ooh. Uh, yeah, let's play as Lubs. Gemini. 
juicing the fruit? Huh? <laughs> Don't like that. Uh, why is this guy all goopy? <laughs> it's basically a giraffe or a llama of some kind, so I guess it's spitting at you. I think it was an enemy from 2. We discussed that before. See, having basically no experience with 2 is great for me, because all the things that are from that game seem completely new, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Over here, I've got a giant sword club thing. Yeah, even with the taunt, you couldn't beat out Noah's aggro on Zephyr, though. Alas. Nicely done, though. Thank you. Why, why did my voice crack? I don't know. It is a desert, after all. I guess. I do got, like, three bottles of water sitting next to me. Ah. Oh, there's so much to explore. Yeah. If you do want to continue, uh, running along the wall is where you need to go. Okay, let's move on a little bit. Round that turn to the left. Yeah, I can see this now. You could actually warp forward by going to the landmark because it's further ahead of you. <laughs> Oops, okay, fine. I was going to ignore you, but if you want to die. For real, though. <laughs> Judging by the pace we're going at, I think we will reach that point that I said would be a good stopping point, so... Uh, I'm glad we're gonna make it there, because it's something I've been looking forward to. It is my favorite combat mechanic in this whole game, and I hope you're really gonna enjoy it. Now for you. Something I have learned, um, if you see your arts down on the right, where some of them have the subtitle where it says evade, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure what that means is that while the animation is playing, your character will automatically evade attacks. Right. I don't think that is a long-lasting buff that will increase your evasion. I can't be sure because a lot of the stuff that ex is explained about arts is not 100% clear. Well, they made improvements with the tutorials. Still a ways to go. There's just a few things in the art explanations that I, I, I don't like, like some buffs. Pretty much all of the buffs in the game don't have a duration for how long they last. I think that's probably because they're all a duration, they're all the same like length, and so they don't need to list it because of that. Oh wow, yeah, you weren't wrong, Spo. Yeah, this is literally just that thing. Uh, this is also sort of a secret area. A little bit higher level things here. I was curious. Uh, there's actually this little hollow area that you're running into right now. One of the other game mechanics that can happen... Oh, we already learned about that. The airdrop supplies. Uh-huh. One of them will drop right there, sometimes. They're kind of random. They seem to happen more after warping to landmarks and stuff like that, in my experience. You think you're all that, do you? that looks like a secret area to me. It's sort of. It's fine for your level as long as you don't try to hit too many of them at once. I think you'll be okay. Probably something the game expects people to explore after, like, one of the next section or two. Uh -huh. But I think you're fine to be here right now. Or else I would have told you not to be here. We've got a team of six. We'll be fine. If you do notice that you're having trouble with stuff, something you can do is add more healers to your team. Because everyone can change classes now. Oh, of course, yeah. 
it's generally a good idea to keep a split of two damage dealers, two tanks, and two healers. But you can change that up if you want to. You're perfectly free to do whatever you want. Ah, six healers. <laughs> I have seen some people go through certain fights, or heard comments about it anyway, of uh, using six DPS on some fights and things just get shredded. Wow. That, that's kind of some of the MMO thing. Lots of classes unlocked right there. One of the things that you can do in Final Fantasy XIV is basically go on... There's an option you can select to go on whatever role you want so you don't have to fit in to what the game is expecting. Right. And so people will do certain raids with an entire party of 24 DPS, and they will shred the boss. <laughs> Even in the desert, we can't get away from Lanza's meat lust. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, there's not actually that much up here. Just a container over here, that's really all there is. Huh. I mean, it is a nice view. This is true, and that is one of the things that makes, you know, exploration worth it in this game. Damn, there were a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, I find most of the stuff that I've gotten from the containers is like, uh, gemstones, uh -huh. which uh, we'll be learning about shortly, and accessories. I haven't actually got much in the way of collectibles from them. Hello, bird. Just minding its own business, man. It was in my way. Wait, is this where I was meant to go anyway? You weren't meant to come up here, but I think it was fine to explore. Yeah. That pathway down there that you can see, that's where you're supposed to go. Okay. Fucking shred it, I'm like. If you do want to drop down quickly, you can uh, warp to the landmark that's down there, but I do see a husk that you can grab as well. Never gonna get used to the word husk. No, that's not a particularly pleasant word. It is what the game calls it, though. You'll notice they don't use an emotionally charged term like a corpse to describe these things. With the way the uh, entire world is set up, they kind of need that. Well, it's not that they even need it, it's just that they don't think about it otherwise. Well, I mean, people are still sad when they see their friends die, and so... You know, or, you know, even countrymen, I guess. You know, fellow soldiers and whatnot. So they need something to detach themselves a little bit from it, I guess. Just a small ditty for this one. I think that guy died sitting up, because he's not laying down flat. Oh, that sucks. Probably died of, like, dehydration or something. Like I think you might be able to just walk over the edge and drop down, or there's the ramp that you could take as well. I would like to not break my shins. <laughs> Like in the other games, uh, you can die from falling too far. So definitely a thing to keep in mind. You see, the second and third Zelda Blade games aren't good because there's no achievement for terminal velocity. <laughs> it's a fun one, though. Okay, I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt that conversation. It wasn't much of one, but it's also relevant to something that's about to happen in about 10 seconds. The fuck is that thing? Yeah, remember those uh, high-level enemies that I said were going to be patrolling around? Kind of oh boy! They're pretty easy to avoid, though. Oh, I think I've seen this scene. Yep, this was a uh, part of the trailer. So ah, okay. Again, I don't really know anything about the trailers. Mio doesn't do well with the heat, though. I'll drag you along myself if I have to. 
I mean, I get that it's hot, but really? God, everyone's whether clothes are fucked up. Food or weather, Mio does not take to heat. I knew this would happen. Heat's never bothered you, has it, Lance? I'm literally half no. machine, I'm Noah. Made of sterner <laughs> stuff. Honestly, I'm starting to feel a little worn out. Oh no. Uh... <laughs> hey look. The hell was that about? Mimi, look. Oh, he noticed that his waifu was tired and he said he wanted to take a rest. Oh, she's his waifu now. <laughs> Water. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Oh, come on. Talk about overreacting. We should be thankful they're back in high spirits. Let's just hope it's not a mirage. Just a brick wall painted on there like fucking <laughs> Wily Coyote and the Roadrunner. <laughs> God, Mio is scrambling to get there. And she is a cat and she wants liquids, mate. Ooh, there's another ether thing. God, this area is fucking huge! One of those things is walking just off to your left. I think you're fine, though. I'll claim the ether here. Yeah, I can see it. Two. No, keep turning to the left. Oh, that! Uh, it was a bit closer. I think it turned around. Guess I can hold on a while longer. What is that? That is uh, one of the odd shards. I think we learned about last time. Keep it together. You're dealing with me. I have since learned what those are for, by the way, since the previous session. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> Feel like I could take on the world. Those other wolves didn't care until you walked forward. Nope. I think I ranked up. I heard the rank up noise. Yeah, it popped over everyone's heads, too. Oh, tie on your... Worth your weight in gold, mate. You keep it up with those uh, rings and such. I thought she said, just let me die. <laughs> Top me in and let me die. Oh, they're naked. Naked nap on. <laughs> nice and cool. Thank the when I was playing this, I think I actually expected this to be a mirage. And I'm really glad it wasn't because it's just a nice scene. All right, then. My turn. You too. Also, being a mirage would have been a really stupid day. twist. <laughs> <Yeah>! wow! <laughs> that is not how you do a cannonball, my dude. Well, when you're half machine, everything is a cannonball. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> you mop it! <laughs> Never do that again! Come on! You're already soaking wet anyway. What difference does it make? No comment. The difference is, you're an asshole. What snuffing difference? <laughs> oh, I've got war in my ears now. I love this groove. I think I mentioned before, I don't think any of them are as good characters or as hey, fun hey. as Shulk and Fiora. But as a whole group, I think they're better as a team than the party in Xenoblade 1. I'll send it to you now. The location of all the Domino's Pizza outlets. A map. I really want Domino's Pizza. <laughs> Annihilation events occur frequently. I have pizza for lunch right after this. Annihilation events? You mean? Yes, 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 yes. Fuck that tired, I guess. Look. I think that's what causes those craters that you ran into before. 
Yeah, that they're all right. It happens here too. Given our route, we should take the safest way possible. Very cautious of you. It's my duty to be. Thank you. His original class is called Tactician, so... Yeah, that's basically his job. <laughs> Come on in, Tyon. The water's great. Oh, that felt great. Oh, I just noticed everyone was in their default clothes for that. Because Noah was taking off his red jacket. Gameplay, story, segregation? I guess. A fucking chonking appetite. Yeah, this is where the game's going to start introducing some more of the stuff you can do at camp. And also the reason that those Nopon are with you, because they actually do things. Oh, what is a cook, sir? Take a dip, cool off that overheated cranium of yours. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was in the library. Not a lot of ventilation with that mop of hair on his head. Really? I can go on because of you. In fact, you've helped me out a lot of times since we joined forces. Such as this flashback? Uh, no. Pretty much just that. Fair enough. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, to determine the best course of action tactically and strategically. <laughs> hey, Tyon, do you think you could tell us the way out of this desert, then? That's right, it's that way. The way out of the desert. Turn the game console off. There, you're out of the desert. Further south to Ruby Flats. We're not going to make it to the Ruby Flats today, by the way. <laughs> That's fair. Or the next session. That's less fair? <laughs> the next session's going to be a very important one with a lot of story and cutscenes and fights and stuff. Ooh, mama. And Tom likes the sound of that. I don't even consider that a spoiler, because that's just kind of a Xenoblade game. <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly transparent with y'all. I was scrolling down my Facebook feed, and I f saw what might be the very last screen of the game. Ah, okay. It was all the characters standing in front of something that looked very sus. And because of that, I might have deduced how the game ends, but I haven't seen anything else. And honestly, I'm the kind of guy who, like, if I get spoiled accidentally, I, I want to see what happens on the lead-up to that. It's the build-up that makes, you know, things more satisfying. Right, the context is what you want. Like, if you're watching an anime like Yu-Gi-Oh! or something. You pretty much know how it's going to go, but you want to see the moment-to-moment -moment, like turns of the duel yeah. that's going to get to that point. And to be honest, ever since Noah said something about the planet slowly dying but them not being aware, and now we have confirmation of like what these events are, annihilation events, it's pretty obvious what the... Uh, solution to the situation is going to be but again i want to see it build up to that and happen that's exciting there is so much that you don't know that knowing that really doesn't matter that much mm -hmm. <laughs> the gordon ramsay of Nopon. <laughs> jeez stop saying mouth hole <laughs> I think Manana may have said that, like, she could make good food, but it would take, like, four hours to cook while we were talking about the story and whatnot. <laughs> Riku and Manana. Little Ravish, Comet Carrot, Bullet Meat. Now, this was something a certain Blade character in Torna dealt with at campsites and whatnot. Temporarily increased the EXP, to the, so their buffs and whatnot. Right, they're basically food buffs that you find in any other game that has something like this. Manana's battle suit, eh? Sounds yeah, 
In cook, you can use the items you have gathered to cook delicious meals. I was going to claim my clothes, but it's aggro about me eating right now, so. Battle suit, baby. And it costs Nopon coins to finish it off. If you don't have the materials, you can instead make it with Nopon coins. Ah, okay. Which is basically what I do because I don't feel like going around to gather the materials, and each meal is only one silver coin anyway, which you're probably going to have a surplus of. Thanks for the feast. You really outdid yourself, Banana. Well, it's actually Banana. It sounds like Banana. I'm floored that you can create such stellar meals out here in the wilderness. She even went out on the battlefield with us, cooking for the soldiers. She carried that into battle? What is that exactly? I think all of her gear that she uses to cook. Dude, if you, like, cooked me a steak on the battlefield, I would be in your debt for life. It would probably be a steak made of rabbit meat, though. <laughs> I don't know. I hear rabbit's decent. Why were you two eyeballing each other? What was that about? Oh, was she like, why aren't you like banana? I, I think it was basically like, why, why aren't you helping us out, Riku? Uh, yeah, same thing, really. By the way, I just want to tell you, just to be really confusing with the fact that we're doing this and Kingdom Hearts Final Mix at the same time, uh -huh. there is also a character in this game named Kyrie. Jesus Christ, Monolith, what are you doing to me? <laughs> I haven't seen a Sora, though. Yet. Yet. <laughs> oh my god, Ansem the Wise is in this game. <laughs> that, that's just suspicious. At this very moment. Riku cannot. What? Mate, you can't just pull the rug out from under our feet like that. Riku just not able to do on certain command. To make gems require gathering of suitable materials first. Yes. Up until now, we just relied on you for all our repairs and maintenance. But thinking about the road ahead, I wonder if it wouldn't be better if we learned to tweak our blades ourselves. Yeah, that. Thanks, Lance. Very helpful commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you a blade period? Oh, that was Mio saying that. Sorry, I was looking at Santa while Mio was saying something. I, I think they were a race similar to what blades were in 2. Just because of the way this world is, they are basically humans. I mean, everything's gone by and who's saying blades and humans couldn't bite. I mean, that was a thing in 2, I'm pretty sure, already. Well, there was like the Blade Eaters and the Flesh Eaters. We'll, we'll get into that when we play 2 on the live stream down the line. Okay, so her cooking can d do all this. That's great. I've been feeling really pumped for the past while. Must be thanks to Manana's cooking. Now, how do I activate it exactly? You can see the timer on it as the little uh, fork and knife icon that's under the map on the right side. Okay, so you just cook it and it activates. You don't need to equip it to anyone. Correct, yes. Don't mind if I do. It's basically like the uh, food from Kingdom Hearts 3. Gotcha. Pretty much any game that has food buffs. <laughs> I really like the cooking system in free. I hope something similar to it comes back in four. I would like to see more of Remy's story. I think that would be really cool. He's a rat who cooks. I think the story's done this much. We don't actually have any of the story from Ratatouille itself, just Remy. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna see Linguini somewhere. Do we have any snacks? There we go. Nice and clean. Not answering the snack question, otherwise I will want snacks myself. Hell yeah, baby. 
level 16 is a really good spot to be. I would probably recommend 17 before the next session. Maybe 18 if you want it to go really smoothly. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, spend coins to cook or cook with ingredients. Now that's already active, so if you cook it again, it'll overwrite. Okay. Lance was just pounding stuff on the table over there. <laughs> God bless him. Ugh. Let's be off. Let's. Should we go here first? Complete Riku and Manana. Which is the other quest that is currently active. Should we go here first? Okay, so we need a eyeball, which is over here. Ooh. Guys, get ready to the whole feel of the area has changed now that it's raided. Why couldn't this have happened when Mio was, like, dying a minute ago? Because, <laughs> uh, Zanza, or whoever the foot the god is of this realm, or Ouroboros, I guess, has a sick sense of humor. Who knows, it could be those, like, fucking organization console dicks, you know, messing with the, uh, weather system. <laughs> Oh, that fusion's building up. Don't think you're gonna get it back before the thing's dead. Nope. Alas. And I was the MVP. And I helped. <laughs> Riku saw the Aspar around here, right? We should take it out quickly. No idea when Riku had the time to go scout this out, but you know, whatever. Riku can just sense when figures that want to kill Nopons are in area. I mean, that's a really good skill for a Nopon to have, to stay alive. <laughs> really? I mean, nature has to tell us humans when things are poisonous and whatnot, otherwise we'll just eat the fuckers. You know, like frogs being different colors and whatnot. Imagine if our world just had the normal animals that we do now, but also those giant lizard things walking around randomly. I might have a panic attack and die. <laughs> Uh, this is a really old HFC bit, but I think I've said before that I I've had, like, nightmares of the eel from Mario 64 existing somewhere deep in the ocean. I'm sure a lot of people have had nightmares of that thing. <laughs> that was raw. The slowdown is, um... Again, I don't like it that much because it messes up my timing, but it does make things a lot cooler, and sometimes that's more important. On the important spot, you just don't get it because you're a philistine. <laughs> Such a long wind up. You'd think she could swing it a little bit faster because she does better with the hammer. I'm the girl with the gun. Ah, she said it! Very cool. Yeah, that's another one you're going to hear a lot of. And by switching, I get to hear these unique things. Eh, you'll hear that one no matter who you're playing as. Ain't nothing like a post-meal worker. Got your number, mate. I'm going to be a boss. Ooh, he's a toughie. Yeah, again, this is why I said it was good that you got to level 16. <laughs> Come on, pay attention to me. At least it's paying attention to Noah. As long as it's on a tank. There we go. Doing nice levels of damage right now. Remember to use your cancels. He fucking evaded it. What the hell? Oh my god, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured that would shock you a little bit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, that's meant to happen. Oof, this thing's ended our horses to it. It's just getting more and more explicit. <laughs> Assertive, this accent. If we don't get a grip, we'll end up its premier workout instead. What friend's doing? There's six of you. 
What is point of numbers if all separate and fight and not together? Fight together? As a team? Oh, what are we? Some kind of... I've already used that. Alright then, I got And everyone else... Accents are just all over the place. I am tumbling right now. What, I run right into the sparkler's jaws? Yeah, no. It's way better taking turns sniping it from a distance. Neither of those plans is effective against an Asper, if you ask me. Which no one did. M me, me, do something! Look, just because I'm wearing the Protag's jacket out of the Protag's sword doesn't make me the Protag. <laughs> Yeah, we have to pick a plan and stick with it. Zeta? Do you know what this is going to introduce? Well, I just said they're on the side. <laughs> chain attack, baby! Let's fucking go! A chain attack is a special powerful technique that allows party members to take turns strategically performing arts. Because it's the tutorial, you're gonna fill up bar very quickly. I can imagine so. Chain attacks are way more involved than they are in Xenoblade 1. They're one of the deepest combat mechanics that's in this game, and I don't fully understand them yet. Well, in 2, you had things where you, like, built up element bubbles, and then you had to smash them. That confused me a little bit until the end of the game. But uh, if you get it to work properly, it's pretty fucking great. Nice thing is that everyone else in your party was already toppled, but this takes them out of that. Chain attack, baby! I might have the answer. Upon starting a chain attack, you'll see three orders. You can pair the completion bonuses to be gained by. Okay. Who should we go with, Spa? Let's see. Go with Noah first. Noah's order will cause all of the attacks to bypass defense, or at least some of them, to bypass defense once it's completed. Very nice. Executing orders. Hit arts to collect tactical points. Maximize bonus TP. Okay, okay. You get bonuses by using characters of the same role and uh, affiliation. Okay. DPS get a bonus for being the first to attack. Healers cannot exceed 99, and if you finish an order with a tank, you will gain back a party member with the highest TP level. So your next one that you use should be either Lands or Senna. Oh, you can switch, okay. Yes. Oh, unfortunately that wasn't enough. You'll have to use lands next. Fair enough. And also, uh, you'll notice that all of your arts will always be fusion arts, if you have one available in that slot, which is going to do way more damage, so you should always pick those. Cool! Reactivation! Completing it in order triggers a chain art, adding a powerful attack to the sequence. Man, this is really involved, but really cool as well. Alright, mate, your turn again. Alright, uh, I would go with Mio. And then use Uni and Tyon first. Okay. Because healers can't exceed 99, so if you try to use them last, you will actually not succeed in the chain attack. You got it. Nice. Chain attacks are just really fucking cool. They are. Like all these different cinematic camera angles and whatnot, and then just like continuing the chain. Next, I would go with lands. Not that you're going to be able to finish this one because you only have one character left, but it's just going to get you the most damage. Jesus Christ. There's so much to it, and you'll learn more as you go along. There's a lot of things I could send you to help understand it more when we're done if you want to, or you could just experiment on your own. Mm -hmm. 
think Noah needs a little bit of healing. And there you go. Yeah, baby. Well, that went way better than before. It's a good job it didn't use the same attack again. It did. It just didn't have the um, story element of being a one-hit KO this time. Riku rated three out of five stars. Also have the feeling Nora and Fred are still, for lack of better word, lacking. I love Riku. <laughs> He's great. <laughs> With practice, Riku thinks friends can pull off bigger and stronger special teamwork moves. Patronizing much, Fluffball? He's probably right, though. It's only been days since we started traveling together. We should learn each other's fighting styles, little by little, and we're bound to see results. I fully agree. The highest damage that I have gotten out of a chain attack is just below 6 million damage. Jesus Christ! You did 22,000 there. I have seen a YouTube video I haven't actually seen the video, but I saw the title, and it's in my watch later for when I get done with the game, of someone who did 400 million damage in a chain attack, and I want to see how the hell they did it. Jesus. I mean, that's all I can say. It's like it, the game is throwing a lot of cool stuff at me. You're regaling me with tales of grandeur. I will say that uh, once you get back to camp and do this little thing is the stopping point that I was mentioned, because if you continue on, We'll be here for another two hours. Ah. So yeah, do the thing that the game wants here, that uh, Riku wants to teach you, and I think that'll be a really good stopping point for this part. Okay. Okay, since Fred's creaking with anticipation, Riku can teach art of gem crafting. In point of fact, for craft gems, in addition to materials that... You know what? Just gonna keep going. I can't talk in this broken syntax for long. <laughs> Props to the voice actors that had to do this, and also the people doing the subtitles that had to write things in this syntax that just feels wrong. Really? Look at how smug he is. We all remember jabs from the first game. They work a little bit differently here. Hmm. That work as base substrate into which materials introduced and then processed. Finally, equip and enjoy. That part is at least easy to understand. <laughs> At rest spots, you can use items to craft gems. They have a number. Yeah, I know how gems work. Very cool. Ironclad, eh? Cool. I've been wanting one of those. He's talking about the gems. Ironclad is a type of gem. <laughs> okay. Yep, it wants you to craft that one. Finished. These do use up ether cylinders. Obviously. And now the game is going to tell you to equip the gym that you just crafted. Of course. And that concludes process. True, true. So where can I put this? On my, on my weapon, in my hair? What's going on? The really nice thing about gems in this game is that everyone can equip the same gem if you really wanted to. They're not limited in Xenoblade 1. And also, if you end up crafting a higher level of a certain gem, it will automatically replace the lower one. Okay. Free gems, baby. Not bad. That would probably be better on a tank than me, though. 
Well, Noah is a tank, but he would probably want the one that can increase agility, since he is a dodge tank. But either way, we got access to chain attacks, we got access to gems, also cooking, and we had a look around uh, a new region. Overall, this was a pretty productive sesh. <laughs> I don't know why I was so dramatic about that, I'm sorry. I don't know why you deliberately avoided the alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was a subconscious thing, who knows. With right materials can create gems of all kinds of properties. This one comes from a free gun. Uh, one thing I will mention real quick before we end. You can craft higher levels of gems without crafting the lower level first. Some people I've talked to did not realize that. If you have the materials already, you can craft a rank 3 gem without crafting the rank 1 or 2 first, for example. Oh, okay, that's cool. Some people I've talked to did not realize that. And there will be times where you have the materials for the higher level one, but not for the lower level one, and so you can just skip ahead if you want to. Neat. That's a quality of life feature. We might be able to conserve my energy if we leave before sunrise. Yeah, before it gets hot. <laughs> yeah. I gotta say, I was just looking out across the desert, and it just reminded me that Sonic Frontier's second island is also a desert. Oh, yeah. Actually, pretty excited for that with all the new info that's come out. Oh, yeah. Especially uh, the new ending theme. I have not checked that out, but I might do that sometime today. Okay, I will send it to you directly after this. Can't we craft, like, a fan? A major fan for a beer to hold? Just take one of the blades and flap it back and forth in her face. Well, it seems like in the next part we'll be pushing forward towards Ribby Flats. What the hell is going on? You completed the quest that the game was telling you to do. Well, that, but there's a sandstorm going on. Oh, right, there's a sandstorm. Yeah, uh, weather changes. Weird thing, huh, Tom? First of all, shut up, Spa. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, this also happens on Sonic Frontier, Second Island. I'll draw up the rotor for guard duty. I'm just saying is all. Ah, <laughs> uh, much better. It's much better, isn't it? Yep, there's level 17. You could get to 18 before the next one if you wanted to. That's up to you. I might do. Just uh, have a look around, explore the region a little bit. Yeah, there's plenty that you can explore back behind you a ways, but it's up to you. Indeedy so. All right, folks, that'll do it for this part of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. We'll see you next time, where the gang pushes forwards towards Ruby Flats. See you then.